costs one pound plus one standard network rate message, or there's free entry at ITV.com. Entrants must be 18 or over. Entries made after lines close at 5 p.m. on Sunday, the 4th of November, will not be counted, but may still be charged. Good luck. Now, in 1998, Natalia Ajanu's father was diagnosed with schizophrenia, but it was too late, unfortunately, because one year beforehand, he had stabbed Natalia's mother, Elva, to death. Last year, desperate to save a life in her late mother's memory, Natalia donated a kidney to a complete stranger, and that, in fact, did save his life. Now, uh, you will see on the telly tonight that that selflessness and bravery was acknowledged at the Pride of Britain Awards, and that's why we've got this little statuette on the table in front of us uh, today. And here's a preview of what you're going to see tonight. He's a heartthrob, he's immensely talented, and he is a rock legend. Here is John Bon Jovi. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here tonight. When I heard your story, I was touched. I was moved by it. You know, you know there are those who give of themselves, and then there are those who give of themselves. I mean, you, you went above and beyond, and you're an inspiration. And the Pride of Britain, uh, this has been an a, incredible experience for me. It's my first time to participate in anything like this, and uh, you're the inspiration for me tonight, and I want to thank you for this. Thank you. It's a tremendous honor for you. You know, it's not why you did what you did. But what did that feel? What did that feel like? What was it like? Amazing. Last night? Very starstruck meeting John Bon Jovi. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think he was the biggest person there that I met, um, and he was so nice and so lovely. He was there for you, um, but I just have to ask you. You know, it's one thing losing your mum in those terrible circumstances, and obviously, in a way, you lost your dad as well. Um, but why? Why? Why the need? Why the need to do this particular thing? I think I just didn't want my mum's story to be about depression and murder and sadness and people like, oh, how can you forgive somebody that's done that or people treating me like I'm a daughter of a murderer. I wanted something good to come out of it. And my mum had always instilled to me about donation. And when I found out, when I wrote my book, I found out I actually hadn't donated um, because she couldn't. Yes. I felt But I donation, had to do donation when you're dead is one thing. Uh, donation when you're perfectly fit and healthy is another. But I'm still fit, fit and healthy. I still can live perfectly fine with one kidney. I'm not any different to anybody else. Um, the only thing I have is a little tiny scar. That's it. I can do everything else the same. And uh, the book's Unconditional Love, which um, I found so lovely to read, that despite you know, your, your father brutally murdered your mother, it was horrific for you. But you realised that he was ill. He, he got that diagnosis of schizophrenia, sadly, after all that had happened. But you managed to find it in your heart to forgive him. Is that the unconditional love that you're talking about? That is, about? yeah. Um, my mum taught me to love people for who they are, not for what they do. Tell me about life and, and growing up and when you became aware that your dad had a problem. I think always we knew something was um, there, but we didn't know what it was. Um, he was very controlling. A, woman, a man stays, goes out to work, a woman stays at home. What he said went. So um, as soon as I was 17, I had to get out of there. I didn't like it. Um, if my dad asked me to do something and I said I would say no, I would get a beating. But I would go to my room thinking, well, I got away with that. I didn't have to do it. Um, and rather take a beating. So I ran away as soon as I could. And how did your mum live with this? She, she just was a withdrawal person. Um, and she just tried to stay positive for us and kept saying when when, when the kids are old enough, when we're 18, we'll leave. We'll all leave together. If there is a light at the end of the tunnel, just give me time. And, and she you, did. She did eventually. I mean, when you first left, you tried to ask her to go with you and she wouldn't because of your younger brother. Yeah. But eventually she did. And you said you had some good times. She was like a different person when yeah, she got out. Yeah, my mum would walk down the street. My mum would like, for what he does for me in a pair of tight jeans. I was like, come on, <laughs> we can't say things like that. Totally different person. I've never seen her shine so much. I've never seen her so happy. She lost a lot so much weight, her confidence. She used to always look at the floor. She started looking up in the sky. She was a totally different person. And then your father rang her to say he had some posts that, that she should come and collect. So what happened? The that night day? before, where I used to live two floors below, below her, and she used to come when I had a bath and sit on the toilet and chat to me. And she said, I have to go collect this post. And she had a weird look about her. And I said, What's wrong? You look worried. And she said, I think he might do something. I think he might kill me. And I said, You really think he's going to do that to you? Do you not hate him? I hate him, Mum. And she said, I love him for what he is and not for what he does. Just like you're my daughter, you could go out and do all the crimes in the world. I would still be there for you because I love you for who you are. So that's always stayed into me. If my mum hadn't said that, my life might have been different. And I know you wanted to go with her, but she ended up getting up very early and going on 
back to the house without you. Yeah, she came you. to me and saw me asleep and left me there. Yeah, and so. and we know what happened. You know, he, he lost control and and he he stabbed her. Was that the first time that you that you felt that he had the ability to kill her? That you had that fear? You you hadn't suspected that before? No. And um, even when the police came and they said, I knew straight away because. I knew that he'd done that because she told me she was frightened. I knew we didn't have a gun. I knew the only way he could have killed her was stabbed. I knew. I just, what uh, what happened really... to your father then? So he got put on, he was on remand for a year, and on remand he then, they did psychological tests and found out he was, he had schizophrenia, um, which then it, it all become clear. And not one minute did, did every day did he not apologise to me. Every day he was sorry, he was sorry, he was sorry. Did mm. you, have you ever accepted that apology? Yeah. Um, and I made peace. I started having a father-daughter relationship. I didn't know what that was before, and I learned to have that. That must so be so many. We talk about how difficult it is to donate the kidney and be altruistic like that, but it must be so difficult as well to accept love from the man who murdered your mother. But it's unconditional love. If that was me, my dad would be there and my mum. So he taught me that, and my mum taught me that. Well, it's an amazing legacy that she left. And, and it was because of all those things she taught you that, that you wanted to do something, as you said, very positive. So what gave you the idea for the, for the kidney donation? Yeah, actually, was, I watched a film called Pay It Forward, where the, oh, yeah. the kid's project is to change the world, and he invented three Pay It Forwards. And, and then you, that, you tell them about that to people. So my first Pay It Forward was something in my mum's memory, and I wanted it to be huge. And that's my kidney, that was the kidney donation, and I've still got two, which I can do the whole of my lifetime. Yeah. That I will just stumble across. Now, normally, when, when you d d donate a kidney, it's, it's anonymous, isn't it? Yes. But, but for reasons we haven't got time to talk about now, but you ended up finding out who, who your recipient was. And this was Chris last night, yes. um, and his message to you. Now, I know you have a few words to say, don't you, to this lovely lady? Well, I'd just like to say thank you for what you did for me. I know thank you isn't uh, really poor words for what you did. You gave me my life back, and it's really amazing what you did for me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and that puts it all in context, and it's so humbling to see that. I still, don't, I still don't think I could do it, but your journey has been exceptional, absolutely He's incredible. He's in trouble for that. I told him he can only say thank you once, uh, <laughs> never again. <laughs> well, well, listen, what about the whole event? We're going to see it tonight on the telly. We've been there in uh, previous years. Um, what did you make of the whole event? It was amazing. Celebrities coming up to you saying, I know who you are, and you're thinking, <laughs> you know that. People were just amazing. Tears everywhere. It was the most beautiful thing in the world. And so many of the people that were, I was on the stage that were up against on other categories, they were amazing as well. Mm -hmm. Even I shed a lot of tears. <laughs> and they're just it's, amazing people. It's an amazing night. Um, I gather that Peter Andre was tweeting about yes. you. <laughs> what did he, what Peter was Andre he was amazing, absolutely amazing. He's such a gentle person with such mm -hmm. a kind heart. Um, yes. He's Couldn't amazing. be as amazing as Carol Vorderman's hair. <laughs> Can't wait to see if that has a life of its own. I have to say thank you to Peter. campus security at Heathrow who gave me the time off and let me do the donation of the kidney. Top woman. Well, well done, Tanya. Tanya. Thank, thank you very much telling. indeed. Uh, One Direction. We're heading to the news. Back with them after this. Don't go away.